So this is one of those hot topics that we're going to talk about while the temperatures are freezing. You see what I did there? So let's jump right into things. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage. I am back in the studio and today we're going to talk about something that's been taking the internet by storm. It's all over social media and I kind of want to throw my hat in the ring on some things and some stuff. And what I'm talking about is the fact that EVs and the cold are two things that don't seem to mix very well. It seems like these things should come with some sort of a disclaimer, warning, training, additional information to let buyers know what they're getting into when it comes to EVs and the cold. If you don't believe that global warning, global warming, if you don't believe that global warming is a thing, yet you still tell your kids about Santa Claus, you're part of the problem. So. That is a real thing. And if you can't tell that climate change is in fact happening, uh, you know, it's 60 degrees, 50 degrees in Hawaii, things like that that are kind of weird. Um, maybe not that weird. I don't know. I'm not Hawaiian. I haven't lived on the island. But I can tell you this much that there's a lot of weird things happening. And right now in Ohio, it's been in the teens. We even hit negative degrees. I want to say a couple days ago, I think it was like two degrees but it felt like negative five or something along those lines. So with all that being said, I just want to say that it's crazy. It seems like electric cars are starting to become a normal thing and they're everywhere. Yet only 2% of the cars in the U.S. are actually electric cars. I hope one day that I'll be a part of the electric car ownership thing. And so right now I'm trying to get my hands on an EV9. So that'll be the first electric car that I film. I'm excited for that one and I'm looking forward to it. So a couple things that I want to point out is that as much as that seems scary, it's not a unique thing to electric cars to have diminished performance with sub 50, 30 degree temperatures, um, specifically below 20 degrees. Anything below above that is still considered pretty good temperatures. The ideal range for batteries is between 68 degrees and like 86 degrees. That's where they're happy. So you can imagine once you get to the 20 degrees, you're kind of missing out on a little bit there. And so it is not optimal if that is what you're driving is an EV. So a couple things you'll notice, you're going to notice decreased range, slower charging speeds. Overall, you're just going to notice that the car is just less efficient. Believe it or not, this does happen to gas cars as well. And so people often think that, you know, because you drive a gas or diesel, it means that these things don't happen to you well. An electric car has a low voltage battery and a high voltage battery. And just like every other car on the market, low voltage batteries, you know, your 12 volt traditional ones, it starts to deplenish even faster in the cold than it would just sitting in your garage in the middle of summer. So something to keep in mind there. And I'm not trying to put electric cars and gas cars in the same boat and try to diminish the problem that they're facing right now. But I am just trying to say that there is a little bit of overlap between the two. And diesel owners will chime in at any moment and let you know what I'm saying when it comes to efficiency, range, all those things, the ability to start the car in the middle of winter, all those things are noticeably different when you're talking about 20 degrees and below. One of the articles I was reading from Forbes says that the average efficiency loss is between 12 to 41% for EVs. And so with that being said, that means that 12% which again is similar to gasoline cars for the uh, efficiency change is, sorry, I got, I got distracted. I'm over here petting my dog. But what I'm saying is that that 12 to 41% reduction in efficiency is actually due to a couple things. And, you know, if you've driven an EV, you notice that when you're getting ready to go to the charging station, it'll say it's prepping the battery to accept the charge which is just the batteries heating up a little bit, adding some temperature so that the chemical reactions and things like that, um, you know, electrons and all that stuff can flow from one place to the other, one side of the battery to the other side, positive, negative, all those things. I'm not going to get into the science because I am no engineer. I am just a person who thinks I'm a mechanic some weekends. But moving on to the next point is that 12% is if you just happen to be below 20 degrees. Now, the other kicker is let's say that you turn your heat on. That means that your toasted buns with your heated steering wheel and your heated seats and all those things, you're trying to get the temperature to be 80 degrees inside of your Tesla Model Y, your Model S, the A, the E, the X, the Y, all of those. You're trying to get your heat up. By doing that, you're adding to the reduction in efficiency, and now you've lost 41% on average mileage reduction, and that's pretty tough. So a lot of people that have let their batteries go below that 20 to 10% range, they wake up one day and their battery is just dead. 
And one of the things that they don't teach you when you buy these cars is how to actually jumpstart those cars or to access the car when the battery has died. Whole another video, something that I want to dive into a little bit more because I feel like those tutorials will be good for owners. And I've learned a lot of that just watching like B is for build, uh, Rich Rebuilds, a couple different channels where they talk about how to uh, get into those cars when the batteries have died. Some of the tips and tricks that you can do is set your climate when the car is still on the charger, park inside of a garage, and really just lower the temperature. Even though it feels like you get in the car, you want to crank it to 85, don't do that. Set it to 65 or 60, you know, bundle up, put on your seat warmers, heated steering wheel, and just keep it a little, a little bit of a lower temperature so that you can get a little bit more range. And most importantly, during the winter time, try not to dip below that 10 to 20 percent battery because one, it's going to take slow, it's slower to charge and everybody else and their mom is going to be at the charging station. So if you want to avoid that charging at home, keep it in your garage. But also, I mean, I'm in the Midwest, so maybe I think garages are more plentiful than they actually are. So that tip may not go for everyone, obviously, but it'll definitely help if you can keep your electric car charged up and in your garage. So that way you don't have frozen door handles or a frozen frunk. And if you do need to jumpstart the car and access these things, they're not frozen shut. So as we start to move into electric cars, you know, I think the last statistic I saw is 7% of new car sales are electric. And another thing I wanted to add on top of that too is that there is a big push to fix the infrastructure for electric cars right now. In fact, President Biden has actually signed a, I think it's $1 trillion, some crazy dollar value on uh, enhancing the infrastructure we have. And the goal is to have a charging station on highways every 50 miles. And I know you're saying every 50 miles is still pretty far, but that's huge considering that a gas station is almost like sometimes every three exits on the highway. The furthest exit I've ever seen for a gas station, I think is when I was in Wyoming, I think it was 80 miles <laughs> to the nearest gas station. And that was pretty terrifying uh, when you're on those open roads, you know, in the middle of like Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, those parts, but it's a great drive. And so having that little anxiety of 80 miles apart, 50 miles seems like a pretty more acceptable, uh, you know, target to shoot for. And I'm hoping that eventually that does kick off and that'll help relieve some of the range anxiety that people feel. You just have to adapt to new technology. There's always changes and there's always workarounds. And I know that some people are like, if I spent $70,000 on a electric car, or let's say I bought a Rivian for 100,000, I shouldn't have to deal with these things. If you tell me I'm gonna get 270 miles on a charge, I should get 270. The thing is, that's not real world, and the way they test those range numbers is not the way that Americans drive. Most people drive at all. So very few people are actually going to hit those things. Um, yeah, but anyways. And rant, I just wanted to get in on the conversation about electric cars a little bit more and talk, uh, you know, share some points to consider. But there are other countries that are way, 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 way more ahead when it comes to electric cars like Norway. I think the statistic I saw was one in four cars in Norway is an electric car. And that's one of the coldest countries. I've never been, but I've heard. And if they are able to make things work, there's no doubt in my mind that the US will find a way to persevere and push through. And I think the trade-offs of electric cars are worth that. And eventually I plan to get into one. And so for those of you that have and are worried about saving the environment and protecting the future for our children and things like that. My hats go off to you. My goal is that electric cars will move away from being like vegan and like a CrossFitter, like those types of folks, you know, and get away from that so they're not getting all the bullying and the hate for being an EV owner. I feel like it's a little bit ridiculous and I hope we start to move away from that. It's not, it's not anywhere near like that, you know? So what if you eat organic things and care about the environment and the planet, you shouldn't be picked on for it. So, and rant for real this time. That's all I got for you guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share your thoughts, let me know whatever I missed, and uh, we'll talk about it some more. But I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.